Episode 50 of Gallifrey Private Radio. This is exciting because we've basically, I've, I've basically been running this uh, show for a year now, minus two weeks. That would actually be an actual um, full year, but close enough, 50th anniversary, or 50th episode, 50th anniversary of Who coming up. This is all really exciting to me. Um, Crazy. I am your host, Davey Bishop, and I'm joined by my two fabulous co hosts, Angela Pritchett, Drew Meyer. And um, to celebrate um, one year of, of doing uh, Gallifrey Pirate Radio, the thing that got me through grad school, <laughs> along with Angela's help. Um, I wouldn't have not have been a help, even if he had known me. Yes. Um, we, we're, we're celebrating um, by talking about um, an, or, an unearthly child, the very first episode of Doctor Who, and also talking about some of the things that are coming up um, with the 50th anniversary of Dr. Hugh. I know. Um, and so, uh, let's, let's get started. Uh, an, an unearthly child. I mean, what do you think of the thing that started our, our pa- I mean, honestly, we're, we're, we're huge Whovians. We love Dr. Who. What do we think of the very first episode of Dr. Who? It's amazing. It's so good. And if you look at the first, ooh, Seven years of Doctor Who, eight years of Doctor Who. This is unique um, in that the fact because it was a pilot, among other things, you, um, the whole style of the show is completely, completely different yeah. from everything else that you're going to see. I mean, really, I could, I could talk about this show and, and its beginnings probably for forever. So I'm going to let you guys do it, yeah. and then anything you don't discuss, I'll jump yeah. in with. Um, what? Well, I mean, what do you think of? The first episode of Doctor Who. Man, Doctor's a jerk. Doctor is a jerk. I, I used a better word. I mean a lot nicer. He's than, so, than what he's tetchy. Head. He's so, tetchy. So wait, so you end up liking jerks, it seems. Well, see, I wasn't used the word bastard, but... Actually, he is a bastard. Yeah. He is. Well, I, mean, I was trying to be a little PG. Look at, I mean, but... look at what he did to Ian. Yeah. Of course. Um, when he touched the his castle. So yeah. Oh yeah, he shocks him. Um, no, um, it's what's fascinating about this program is you have the show. It's called Doctor Who. We are assuming that we're talking about Susan Foreman's grandfather, who he does not introduce himself or no. is referred to in that first episode. Just as her as grandfather a or a doctor. No, he is referred to as a doctor because they the two I teachers think talking. he's a doctor. Yeah, well, she lives it, with her grandfather. Isn't it, isn't I believe he a he's doctor? a doctor. Yeah, something like that. So he's he doesn't introduce himself as the doctor. Um, I think really just grandfather all. grandfather yeah uh, grandfather who probably would not have been as popular a title um, yeah. <laughs> grandfather who yeah so <laughs> oh, um, but you have the show in which the title character is not the character that you're sympathetic towards yeah in fact he is essentially the antagonist of the program um, our protagonists really are the teachers Ian and Barbara and then Susan is an accomplice to the antagonist, yeah. Yeah. and it's kind of in that neutral territory. And it's great you bring this up, because I do want to tie in the 50th anniversary of Who to this, and this was a, a recent quote from Stephen Moffat. Okay, let's hear um, it. The companion, not the Doctor, is the main character in Doctor Who, mm-hmm. according to Stephen Moffat, with Amy and Rory about to leave the show, and a new companion, play, played by Janine Louise Coleman, arriving in this year's Christmas special. Moffat told BBC America, the story begins anew, and not so much with a new Doctor, but with a new companion. It is their story. The Doctor's the hero, but they're the main character. Um, he added, I thought about the Doctor traveling on his own, and it is always uh, fa- um, faintly depressing me. Uh, so, I mean, I think even at the very beginning, I mean, with this very first episode, I mean, 
who really is the main characters of this first episode. This is a very interesting. I'm glad you brought this up. Something I wanted to discuss with you for a number of times. With Hartnell is the only Doctor in Classic Who in which Ian and Barbara and Susan are the main characters. After Hartnell, um, Trout and on, the companions are, and they never actually use that term, the companions really are just companions, they're assistants. Yeah. Um, it isn't until we get Rose um, where the stories revolve around the companions. It's the doctor gets into some kind of trouble and we use the, the tra his traveling companions as ciphers or plot to further the plot. But with Ian and Barbara, they really are the protagonists of yeah. the story. You know, they are, um, I don't want to say Joe Average, I don't know what they would call them in England, but um, you know, we have these school teachers, and we keep in mind that this show was originally designed to be a science fiction show that was supposed to be educational. Yes. Where the o underlying theme was teaching science and history. That's why we have a science and history teacher along the ride. So we would go into what is essentially episode two with 10,000 BC. 100,000. 100,000 BC. Um, it is, um, it's kind of a history lesson, even though it's, it's a really poor history lesson. And it's painfully bad. I liked it. I thought it was actually uh, quite it impressive. It shows that Hartnell's kind of bad. I mean, come on, picking up that rock. Yeah, is... but I mean, uh, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, compared to what comes next, sure, yeah. sure. But it's also a pilot, and you um, can tell they had a little bit more budget well, for actually, this one episode. Actually, than... no, no, actually, no. Um, this is not actually the pilot. The pilot was the thing that they that Sydney Newman thought was absolutely crap. Well, sure, they... and and that was just. The first segment, the first, I guess you'd call it episode, or part of the story. Because um, back then it was unheard of to refilm anything. Sure. But luckily they had a teeny tiny bit of budget left. Which is amazing when you think of yeah. a show that the BBC says, Hey, we'd like to make this show. It's unlike pretty much anything we've ever seen except for, it was obviously modeled yeah. after the quarter miss experiment and quarter miss in the pit. Um, but you have a female producer. Yeah. You have... Um, I don't remember uh, where Hussein is from. Um, I don't know if he was born in in England or he had yeah. lived, moved from England or he may have born in uh, the Middle East. Um, to have something like that, to have relative unknowns. Yeah. Uh, Hartnell had, had wasn't, wasn't really a, a popular character. He, yeah. he had done films, yeah. uh, mostly drill sergeants in army films. I, I think, I think the, correct? Him and the yeah, and the actor that played uh, Ian, um, right, William Russell. William Russell were the were, were honestly the two big names of the show. Sure. Um, Carolyn Ford was pretty much an unknown at the time, um, and honestly, I think J Jacqueline Hill had done some stuff, but not to the level of um, Hartnell or Russell. Sure. If I remember correctly. Well, Hartnell, getting on in years, had had done yeah. television and film, so that was a, a, yeah. a big push for that he was a name but this is a fairly risky program plus also look at it they made a pilot yeah. they didn't like the pilot oh. they refilmed the pilot you can watch the pilot on yeah. this too um the pilot was just uh, either it's it's a different tone the pacing's totally different the doctor's far more antagonistic and you know the the sets are literally coming apart during the pilot and i'm you know i'm honestly i don't know if the show would have continued on if they would have used that as the first episode. Well, imagine that pilot, which, of course, if you if you get the DVD, certainly yeah. take a look at that. Imagine that pilot, and then imagine it coming out the day after Kennedy is assassinated. Yeah. Because the numbers for the very first airing of it aren't that good, so they show it again yeah. the next night. So we're no, looking no, at... No, no, actually, it was the next week. The next week, so we got to see... Before before the the, the new episode, they, they did them back-to-back. -back, so we did it on the 23rd up, of September, yeah. and then the It picked 30th. up about 2 million uh, viewers, so it had about 6 million for the re-airing of episode 1, and uh, along with episode 2. But yeah, I mean, it's... There was a lot going against this. A lot I going mean, against it. Which is amazing, too, because when you watch this, it really is a phenomenal first episode. Oh, it, it, it really, it's, it's, and it, uh, a lot is thanks to uh, Sidney Newman. Sure. I mean, because he's the one that watched it, and he just looked at them and pretty much said, 
what did you just give me? This is horrible. <laughs> and, you know, he went back and he actually went down there and, and helped them reshoot the thing. Sure. Um, and I honestly, I mean, they, those three are, I th in my opinion, you know, the parents of who. Oh, of course. Um, without them, I don't know if we've had the show or what it would have looked like, with, what it would have looked like if one of them was, was missing. Um, it's, I mean, it just gives me goosebumps. And I, I'm just so glad it actually survives, unlike so many of the other classic episodes like this. Sure. Well, let's take a look, because we just finished yeah. watching the episode. We did. Let's talk, take a look at what we get in the very first episode, obviously spoilers ahead. Um, we get <laughs> not only an yeah. introduction to the doctor, we yeah. get the doctor's granddaughter, and we get our, our very first two companions. And I, I yes. know that Susan counts as a companion, but let's face it, she is almost an extension of the Doctor. She's the good side of the Doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yeah. This alien kind of technology. Like the, the scales. Style. It is very much the scales. So we have an introduction to our first companion. Yeah. We have young Susan, an unearthly child, who yeah. we see for the very first time, even though she's introduced out of context, being described yeah. as being supernaturally intelligent in many things, but a little ignorant yeah. in the ways of this... This world. Every, the everyday this, life. This time. So we see her for the very first time yeah. listening to John Smith and the Common Men. Yes. Um, which, bravo for the writers, um, which I, I believe the very first time we're mentioned John Smith is um, Pertwee yeah. when he is um, found at the hospital for the first time in uh, Spearhead yeah. from Space refers to himself as John Smith. Bravo for bringing that back. Um, if that's the case, it could be. That's a, the case. It could be a happy coincidence. It could be a happy coincidence, but still. But it's a great happy coincidence. We get the TARDIS for the very first time, yes. located at uh, seventy six Trotter. Yes. Um, in a junkyard. Yes. Foreman's junkyard, yes. which happens to be the name for Susan. So Susan, Susan, we have as just being Susan, not really Susan yeah. Foreman. So we know that that's probably not her last name. Um, we get Ian touching the TARDIS for the first time and exclaiming, "It's, it's alive. alive!" Yeah. Which, sure, if you're looking at it in the vernacular, he is referring to it as actually being yeah. electronically plugged into yeah. something. He looks for the plug. But still, it's alive. We certainly took that. Um, it's not until... Um, oh, I guess it's not until Tenet where they say that TARDIS, TARDIS no. aren't built, they're grown. No, um, no I think that, I think that uh, actually is Pertweet. Pertwee says that? Oh, no, I don't know if he says it exactly, but no, he really refers to her, or refers to TARDIS as a living organism. And as so, a living organism? Yeah, because um, I got the TARDIS handbook, and I mean, you'd be really surprised by just where they're pulling out various quotes. I mean, it, the concept of TARDIS as being alive and, and being a... Somewhat sentient. Uh, um, yeah, creature uh, early on. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, and yeah. of course, uh, we get the name TARDIS. Yes. Um, which is interesting because Susan's comment is, well, I have given it the name, I have given it the nickname from time and relative yeah. dimensions in space. So she names it. She names it the TARDIS. She says she names it. Yeah. But of course, retroactively find out that it is a model 40 yeah. TARDIS later like on. 40, of course. 40. So we can get that. Um, God, what else do we get? You get your uh, scarf. We get, <laughs> yes, the doctor wears a scarf and the hat. Um, we get the very first shot of someone trying to figure out what the hell is going on when they walk into the TARDIS, mm -hmm. and it's bigger on the inside. Yeah. And then we get Hartnell very antagonistically just mocking Ian for just being a yeah. human, essentially a human who can't open his mind. We get to find out that he is, in fact, they tell him they're aliens right from the beginning. Not only aliens, but exiled aliens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wanderers in the fourth dimension. Yeah. So much is set up. Um, and there's there's actually another thing if you actually look. Um, and, I mean, this is this is I mean, you really have to look. <laughs> um, the book that um, Barbara Linzer, the French Revolution. Yes, that actually happens to be one of the Doctor's favorite time periods. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they which don't which is until later. And she opens up. She's like, "This isn't right." Yeah, this which she right. which actually comes through in a uh, actually a, a Hartnell episode later on. They actually talk about that being his favorite his time favorite period. period. I think it might. It might be the gunfighters. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's mentioned there that that's his favorite time period. Which of course tie into um, Madame de Pompadour. And yeah, other I mean, things. exactly. Sure, of Our, course. Who actually? Uh, spoiler: the actress is coming back. The actress is coming back, and we don't know who she's playing. They've kept a tight lip on that. That's interesting. Yeah, Just little tidbits. Like I said, we're going to talk about the 50th year and everything else. Hmm. This is all about the 50. 
Okay. So, and of course, yeah. uh, and I know we have a very limited amount of yeah. time here, but um, and we, we, we get our first transportation. We can hear the whooshing sound for the yes. very first time. It dematerializes. We okay. get to see the vortex in its way, yes. which is shown in the credits. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's shown. And then we get this great ending where they don't say where we are. We just see the TARDIS resting in a sandy dune yeah. and an ominous shadow appears. Next episode, The Cave of Skulls. Yeah. This is a great episode. Yeah, it, it is. is a fantastic episode. And I think you're right, and I never thought of this before, as it's standing alone. Obviously, you don't sell just Unearthly Child. Right. You have to include the, the three-parter that follows it. Yeah. Um, uh, the Tribe of Gum, which yeah. is as it was originally described, which oh. really, come on. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. Um, which is actually, I don't even think they ever mentioned Gum in that episode, but it's been so long since I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, but all in all, yeah. excellent first episode. But yeah, I know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's amazing that, you know, it's, you know, we lost Doctor Who. We had an American TV movie. We had some, com you know, the comedy special, uh, Curse of Fatal Death. And then we get it back. And then we get it back. And not only do we get it back, we get it back good. We get it back good. It's true. And, you know, we got it back. I mean, we got, we got it back before the 50th. Um, and, I mean, 50 years. I mean, 50 years of The Doctor. I mean, movies, stage plays, comics. A towel. Toys. No, something else. Um, scars, fezzes. Books. I mean, I mean there's, there's how many novels of Doctor Who? A uh, ton. A ton. I mean, you had the Ace novels, and you had the... Um, Target novel. The Target uh, novelizations. Yes, novelizations. Yeah. Then we actually, once the Doctor Who went off the air, they started putting together... The light is blinking. I'm yeah. going Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Checking. I'm making sure the dialect <laughs> is uh, filming us okay. properly. So, um... We start to get into uh, the adventures of essentially the Seventh Doctor. Yeah. Um, the Seventh Doctor books eventually stop and kind of continue with Bernice Summerfield, but yeah. the Doctor Who is never allowed to mention it's just the new adventures. Right. Uh, Ninth Doctor, we get our 1996. No, we, we had a whole run of Eighth Doctor books, too. Yeah. Well, I'm In saying, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say the Eighth, the yeah. eighth Doctor yeah. with the 1996 yeah. movie. Then we get all those great, there's a hundred and something like twelve before... The series, and then of course people start going back yeah. with uh, going back and, and kind of writing their short stories, their novelizations, and we get it back. And I'll, I'll be and all the audio dramas too. And all the audio dramas, which I have yet to hear a single They're one. So amazing. I feel like I, I have, may have given you blank discs to show you. I have blank discs to give you. Yeah. And uh, wait, not today, but I do have. Of course, but I mean, j I mean, just think about it. I mean, when we were at StellarCon, you picked up old fanzines of course. about Doctor Who. American so, fanzines. I know, and, and, and I mean, that's the amazing thing about Doctor Who. I mean, I'm not sure exactly when the fandom began, but I would want to say it, it probably exactly, started... I'll tell you exactly when the fandom began. My, just let me, my Go guess is, is with the dialects. Exactly, I was going to say. Uh, yeah. Second episode, uh, who, Dalek Mania hits. Second, yeah, the second story. I mean, I'll be honest, I never realized that they were the second story. Yeah. I mean, I, I I truly never realized they had come so early on in mm -hmm. the mythos of Doctor Who, and honestly, I do credit a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I give the dialects a lot of credit because I honestly I don't think if we didn't have the dialects, if we didn't have Terry this Nation, version yeah. of Unearthly Child, I don't think it would have survived Hartnell's departure from the show. It's true. Well, you know, it almost actually, Hartnell almost barely survived the Daleks. Uh, yeah. The, the, it came to the point where they were making movies that were the Dalek movies with Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, with um, Cushing. Uh, Cushing, Peter. Yeah. So, yeah, you have, the fandom started really early on. It's just something that I cannot imagine, because you actually grew up with Doctor Who. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the amazing thing is I can't tell you what the first episode was, who my first Doctor is. I have always known Doctor Who, which I think is just, I think is absolutely wonderful. I know I talked to a lot of people that could say, this is my first episode, this is my first Doctor, um, but I can't do that. And, I, and I, I think those people are incredibly special because they could say, this was my first episode, this was my first Doctor. But I, then I also feel special that it's like, I've always known Doctor Who. I haven't, and I can't imagine what it's like to be British to have grown up in that in that time period. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine, you know, sitting sitting down after hearing the news of Kenny, which I mean, I don't really think it affected them 
as much per se, but just to have seen this for the very first time, to hear those classic sounds, uh, uh, all that stuff. Um, you, you, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, what, what, which, which, what's your viewpoint? I mean, with well, the doctor I, and stuff. Truthfully, I mean, Kennedy to the British wouldn't have been that big. Yeah, they would have heard it, but I mean. But I mean, I mean, for you, I mean, the doctor, your, 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 your experience, your love, I mean. When did That's it first the happen? question you're asking because you stopped mid sentence and then pointed to me because I'm like, what are you? You, you were talking and then yeah. pointing to me. Yes. Words, yes. words, words. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I mean, who was your first doctor? Remember, I, I grew up watching them at like okay. home on PBS and then at like the comic shop, so I have no idea. Now, I'm glad you brought up PBS because I like to I like to bring this up a lot. Did you ever see Doctor Who on PBS? I did. Okay. Because, you know... I, That's the first time I watched Doctor Who was on PBS at but, the showers being babysitted by someone who was only six months older than me and said, hey, it's 11 o'clock. We should watch Doctor Who. Well, what throws me is, you know, pretty soon, and, I mean, it, it's already happened, there's a whole generation that's seen classic Doctor Who for the first time, but they, they didn't see it first on PBS. Oh, well, that's true. I mean, it. I mean, I think that's uh, you know, that that sort of that sort of interesting line. You know, those that first saw Classic Who on PBS, and those that first saw Classic Who on like DVD or on like BBC. And I'm talking about American viewers, not the British, of course, because they. It's always been on BBC over there. Sure. But it's really interesting that you know there is going to be that that divide. I don't think it's a bad divide. I think it's a very interesting divide because I mean, how many shows or or movies or whatever get that sort of divide that that, that thing because I mean this thing has spanned 50 years sure. I mean this is generational at this point more so than anything else out there yeah other than um, Star Trek I think this is the Doctor Who is, is certainly one of those it's stood the test of time um, we just go to the point where um, okay the series made its North American premiere in January 1965 on CBC with the broadcast of William Hartnell's first 26 episodes. Well, you look at really? Yeah. Hi, Google. Wow, that's that's really fascinating. Because nobody look. really ever talks about that. They always talk about PBS. Well, I was also born way after 1965, so I would not have known any yeah, of that. I wouldn't know that either. Well... You know, I have been back and forward in time. Yes. Um, I went back to 1965 and watched it and came back to the I was responsible was for the broadcasting of it. Yeah. Then why do you guys complain about those missing episodes all the time? Well, I kept them in my We only saw the first 26 and then came back and missed the rest. You <laughs> <laughs> give them a back. No, this is really interesting, is that they're saying that they actually broadcast the, the 26 episodes. I guess none of those are any of the missing episodes. Um, that that we no longer have, hmm. um, and then of course the next big the it's next twenty six episodes yeah. is episodes. not and stories. Yeah. This is yeah. all for there. Yeah. there, and then of course the, course the next later. big uh, dump of Doctor Who. And it just Hugh. says Hartnell. It doesn't say any of the others yeah. though. So, yeah. but it, then in seventy two is when we get the the Baker stuff. Starting to get the, the Baker, Baker stuff, stuff, of course. Um, so um, I want to jump a little ahead. A little head here to actually next next year with the fiftieth. Sure. Not the next not the next season because that won't be the fiftieth. Would you like to see any of the remaining actors from an unearthly child come back for the fiftieth? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think we were talking about this earlier with the Sarah Jane Adventures. She references um, both William Russell and Jacqueline Hill as Ian and Barbara. That yeah. They're still alive. They're still teaching, and they haven't aged. Yeah. Admittedly, that's going to be very hard for them to show them not aging, but I would love to see them. Um, I'd love to see Carolyn Port. I gotta say, well, unless unless they did this, unless they recast those characters, but have those two actors playing different parts in the fiftieth. I don't. I would not want so. to see recasts. I well, if I would love to see. I would love to see any people who are part of the history of Doctor Who show up in one form or another because yeah. as a fan, that's the kind of thing we love. We need yeah. to pay respect to these folks. And I think younger audiences need to be able to have that connect I agree. before they've gone back and well, watched the classic. I didn't say video. not have them there. I said put them in somewhere. Yeah, but, no, I, but I, I wouldn't want to see recasts because I, I mean, 
I mean, they've, they've talked about that, you know, they did recast the first Doctor for the um, five Doctors. I thought he did a great job. Oh, I think he was... I a, loved it, Ainsley. I, honestly, I thought he did a great I job. I honestly thought he was the first Doctor. I'm not going to lie, when I was a kid, when I saw it for the first time, I, I never made the connect that the guy that did the, the speech at the very beginning of Black and White wasn't the same actor. Sure. Um, but, I mean, I just... I think nowadays, I just I just don't think you could recast those those early Doctors... Especially now that we we've, we've seen them in the show as themselves. Oh, you mean with like the kind of flashbacks? And with stuff the flashbacks or? and things like that. I would much rather if you're if you're going to show those the doctors that have passed. I didn't say doctors. Oh, well, I'm just. I just said to get around that one loophole yeah, but, of what was said in the previous. But episode. but any of them, I would I would rather see flashbacks via clips as opposed to. I think if anybody deserves to be in the fiftieth anniversary. Oh, it's William Russell, Jacqueline Hill, and Kate Lamford. Yeah. Then, if you had to, if you know, like for instance, gun to the head, and I, I think they should. But if you had to choose a, one other person, um, I think Fraser Hines should be in there as Jamie. Yeah. Um, I would love to see. I mean, I would love to see a ton of people. I would have, of course, we would love to see Liz Sladen and and Nicholas Courtney. Yeah. Um, and and just and not just because they've passed, but because obviously Nicholas Courtney should have. Yeah. Should have been in New Who. I'm sorry, that was your bad, BBC, for not getting him in there in Doctor Who proper. It's wonderful that he made it to Sarah Jane, but well, I, th I think just part. Boo. I think part of the honestly, I think part of that problem was who on you who was was his health. Sure, of course. I mean, but and he I managed and I, to make it on the Sarah Jane. Yeah, I know because I think he was was having a good day, and they were actually filming stuff. Sure, um, I, it, it's kind of like with Hartnell and the Three Doctors. The only reason why he even agreed to it was because they hit him on a good day. Yeah. Um, because if they would have gone to him like a couple of hours later, he wouldn't have even had any recollection of having that conversation. It, it would that that is how bad his health was at the time. But luckily, you know, they they worked around it. You know, he was in his little time eddy. All of his lines were written on, on giant boards, and all he had to do was read off off the boards. Oh, you're thinking of Hartnell, aren't you? That's what they're not Nicholas Courtney. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, with with the three doctors, you oh, know, sure. they did that with Hartnell too. Um, Absolutely. So, they, they did what they could, and you know, I can't find. I mean, I would have loved to have seen the Brigadier with the Doctor one last time. Yeah. I thought they honored him phenomenally well. I thought it took him long enough. <laughs> now that's where I'm gonna say bad on UBBC. Yeah. Um, but at least he got the nod. Sure. Um, and actually, speaking about um, the fiftieth and who we wanted to see, yes, please. This is I'm finding this very interesting because I'm shocked that this actually hasn't already occurred yet, or this talk hasn't occurred. But uh, John Barrowman right now is urging fans to campaign for his character, Jack, Captain Jack Harkness, to appear in the fiftieth anniversary episodes of Doctor Who. I think it would be a shame if Captain Jack wasn't involved in the fiftieth anniversary because he was such a big figure and a big presence within the show itself and also within Torchwood, he told and TV Geek at the Chicago Comic Con. Captain Jack better be in the 50s. Um, but Behrman said, it's not up to me, it's up to the executives, and it's also uh, kind of up to the fans, because if they want it all, they have to do, all they have to do is get on those keyboards and start writing. Addressing fans directly, he says, you know you, um, you, you have been known to uh, change things, he added. I've spoken to Russell T. Davies about it. He thinks it would be a great idea for Jack to meet to meet Matt's doctor, I think it would be a great idea. Matt and I actually had a conversation at BBC once, sitting around a table, thought it would be a great idea. Stephen Moffat thought it would be a great idea. And so, again, it's one of those things. Great ideas sometimes never happen. They sometimes do, but you know, I guess you just have to have to watch this space, or if referring to the Maybe, maybe uh, Moffat just blog. needs to write an episode with Captain Jack in it. Well, kind of be like, this would be a great episode. Well, or he already Neil has. Neil Gaiman, write an episode. Did he essentially create Captain Jack for the empty child? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is he was originally supposed to be in A Good Man Goes to War, but they were filming Torchwood uh, Miracle Day, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. what stopped it. I it. mean, I would be, I mean, I was really shocked when I heard Berman say this, because from everything that I've sort of heard, it was pretty much a done deal to get Jack in either this upcoming season or the 50th. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, I mean, as much as I'm not a, I, I, lo, I love John Barrowman. I, I do like Captain Jack quite a bit. Not as much as some people, um, but I, I really do think he belongs somewhere in the fiftieth. Yes. I would love to see him. I wouldn't be crushed if I didn't. I kind of want to see Idris come back and Captain Jack hit on her. I no. never <laughs> want to see Idris again. 
<laughs> Idris did what I'm she, she did what she needed to do and things like that. Sure. Guys, it's called sarcasm. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll certainly take Captain Jack for Rose. I do not want to see Rose in... Well, okay. I take that back. If you're going to do a 50th anniversary and they're going to go, you know what? Everybody we can get, I'm saying bring it on. Make it an hour and a half long episode. Let's just... No, whatever dude, it is. Dude, you don't realize they're not talking in one episode. Talk about all season. This is going to be a season no, I, long thing I, for the 50th. I understand, but what I'm saying is if they were going to bring back a Everybody large quantity in of one people. Episode? No, not necessarily. Okay, I was about to say. <clears throat> what I'm saying is <laughs> you can spread it out and make it tastefully done. Yeah, exactly. But if we went, God, we have to get everybody in there. Then yeah, bring everybody in there. Yeah. Make it a make it a just a smorgasbord of who history. I'm cool with that. Uh, I'd love to see Captain Jack. I think yes. Captain Jack and Matt Smith together would actually. Amazing. I never even thought of it. I think it'd be really fun. Um, it'd be awesome. But yeah, I, I think it'd be an interesting thing. I just I would have loved to have seen Captain Jack in an Amy episode though. Um, well, I mean that's the interesting thing is. <laughs> no 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 no. I'd like to see Captain Jack hitting on Rory. Yes. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to see Captain Jack hitting on both of them. Because you got to remember. And then bring River Song in. It should because, be like, Because, Because, guys, you got to remember, and I think I think this has been a disservice to the character in Torchwood lately, is Captain Jack is omnisexual. Look, that's why I said all of them. homosexual. That's why I said all of them. Because lately, in a lot of the Torchwood stuff, it's all it's been about Captain Jack and the guys. But, I mean, he's really supposed to be omnisexual. He's supposed to chase after everything. I like the fact that he was in a committed relationship. I thought. Oh that no, was no, I, 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 I totally agree. Spoilers, I mean, just in case. Yeah, no, I mean, I loved him with Yanto, and I love that entire thing. But then, ever since after Yanto, mm -hmm. it was just you know, it was always guy after guy after guy. They kind of forgot that he was omnisexual, and that's all I'm saying. Because like when he's on Doctor Who, he he has that omnis uh, omnisexual sort of vibe. But when he's on Torchwood, it's definitely a homosexual vibe. We had a, and had a I'm little not, spoiler. He had a little stint with Gwen. Yeah, I know, but I'm not. I'm not saying anything bad about it. I mean, I'm all for homosexual characters because the eighth, the eighth Doctor actually had the first uh, lesbian, le companion. lesbian companion, and I thought I think that's absolutely wonderful. And that's in the comics, comics, or audience. comics, or audience. The comics. comics yeah. Um, and uh, so, is there anything else you w would really want to see? From the history of who within within the fiftieth anniversary? Oh yeah. Um, well, and I think I'm going to get it because I think, I think, um, oh my goodness, Whithouse. I think Toby Whithouse is going to write a Zygon episode. Um, I would love to see the Zygons. I think they are a Doctor Who character that never kind of got, I would like to see, actually no, just as a blanket statement, I would like to see some of these great conceptual ideas for aliens that just couldn't be made because the technology and costuming wasn't available to them, I would like to see modern versions of it. Oh, yeah. I know people have a problem with the Silurians, but you know what? They're back. I think it was great makeup. And as, as, a, mm -hmm. as someone who likes makeup, I, wouldn't it be just great to go back and go, well, okay, maybe not the Yetis, because the Yetis, we do get to see the Yetis again in the Fifth yeah. Doctors, but... We, but some of these great characters, even in the background. Well, you know what the interesting thing was a about cantina scene about the, the Solarians was they actually recreated the original design. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, is they said this was another offshoot of them. Sure. So I mean, I think it works. I would love to see you know the new ones and the old ones together in a scene. I just finished watching Warriors of the Deep. We we have uh, recreations of both the Sea Devils, terrible name, and the Solarians. <laughs> um, you know, which are reversions of the, the costumes. Yeah. But yeah, no, that if, if I had to see one thing, uh, I would like to see um, William Russell, Jacqueline Hill, and Caroline Ford brought back in, in, in some aspect. Just, just a question, because I really don't know. I know, I know Car uh, Carol's still with us. I know William's still with us. But is uh, Jacqueline still with us? That is something you'll have to look up. I don't remember. She I did make a remember. wonderful stint in Megalos, uh, which, come on. Oh, yes, Megalos, we need another tyrannical psychic cactus. Would be fantastic <laughs> to make a, I mean, a, or a, a mention. Even if the doctor mentions in one of his very fast-paced speeches, speeches, it would be really cool just to, as an homage. However, they can push that too far. And it, if it gets too... Uh, I want to see canine again. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see canine again. I'd love to see canine. Oh, but here's the problem. 
K9 is currently in a television show in Australia right now for our modern K9. He flies. Yeah. He doesn't look yeah. anything like K9. I wouldn't have a problem with that for the 50th anniversary. But no, great. no, I mean, they did work it out with Sergey because he started becoming a reoccurring cast member. Okay. So they, they, they did. I love Because I love K9. Yeah, no, I. Is Leeson still uh, alive? The, the, the original voice of K9? And uh, I, I can't remember the second actor, and I'm sure you were great, you were fine, but you just. You weren't the same. Now, of course, he was there for, for school reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have been so enmeshed in Classic Who that I've, I've kind of forgotten <laughs> what's <laughs> going on. Uh, I'm really looking forward to finishing it so I can go back and watch um, all the new Who. So. Yeah, and, I, I, and we're getting close. I mean, August, little by little, we're getting there. And don't forget, we will be watching it and, and commenting on hopefully that night or not the next day. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's going to be weekly. Though I will yeah. say this. Um, I have only watched Doctor Who on TV once, and that was the Christmas episode. I've never seen Doctor Who. No, I take it back. I watched the very first episode of season six on BBC America. I hate watching Doctor Who with commercials. It is <laughs> terrible. That's I, why I would normally, like, if it was a busy week for me, unless I watched it with them, it would be on in demand. Sure. I would just yeah. watch them all on in demand. So, um, we got to wrap this up. Yes. Of course. Um, because I mean, I could talk, I could talk general who like this for a very long time. Of course. Um, however, we don't have this room for much longer. Yes. Um, thank you for uh, joining us for our fiftieth episode. Yay! Sort of commemor commemorating our first year of doing uh, Galfrey Pirate Radio. Oh, we, we're, next year. Where we, you know, we talked, we talked to Leslie Child. We do have some big plans. Huge. Um, and I, honestly, and thanks to the two of these guys. Um, both uh, Angela, Andrew, which I honestly, I, it's, they, they bring so much to the show, to this show, not Doctor Who. Uh, they would bring a lot to Doctor Who. We actually were on Doctor Who. But I mean, they I would make a terrible companion. I would be the turlo of new companions. Yes. But, um, but I, I would say this. I mean, they do a lot of work behind the scenes promoting the show, getting interviews lined up, uh, getting conventions lined up. Um, they do so much work for the show. I, they, they strive so me. So many guest stars yeah. coming in soon. Uh, so many. They strive me to keep making the show better and better and doing more things. And to get and, off his butt and film some episodes. Seriously. Yeah. But I mean, I, I can't thank the two of them enough. Uh, two of them enough. And um, I, even though they didn't start this journey with me, uh, they're definitely uh, continuing on this journey with me since they um, have first appeared. Uh, Angela, I think her first time we had her it was, was a Torchwood Miracle Day. Yes, yeah, so, which I think was around episode seven of this, and um, Drew uh, his first appearance what was What the, the Hell Con. What the Hell Con. Which I see, I remember these things because I mean, like I said, these two guys have done so much for the show and stuff, and I mean, I look I look forward to you know watching this upcoming season, then taking the journey of the 50th anniversary with them, and then you know exploring the, all the classic who some of the spin-offs and things like that in, you know, the upcoming years cuz honestly, I never thought I'd make it a year. I made it a year. This is not going anywhere. Um, and you know, you know, the sky's the limit, man. Yes. So, um, I'd like to thank both of you. Well, you're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank and you for for bringing us along in this this journey. It's so much fun. It is. Yeah. It is. And I honestly, I don't know how she puts up with me sometimes. No. Yeah, but she does, thankfully. So uh, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off, um, and uh, and it's one year anniversary. Oh, and just to let you know, um, this should come out before uh, Con Carolinas. Um, it's not going to say anything about conventions in this entire episode. Well, this one should be coming out. Con Carolinas was one of the first places we we filmed episodes um, for GPR, and I just want to give a shout out to them. They're uh, June first. Or the first weekend of June. June first through the third. Yeah. And they're going to be hosting. They're going to be hosting a GPR panel, and hopefully both of these two guys will hopefully. be there. Hopefully, you talk? I'll be on it. <laughs> You're on it. It's me. It's me. I yes. got to find out if my duties as a uh, a shaper of young minds will allow me to. But it's it's. I'm really happy that we get to continue this celebration of a one year anniversary at Con Carolinas, the place that let us do some of the very first episodes. Well, we didn't do a GPR panel at Con Carolinas. You just filmed the, the Doctor Who from Yes, Paris. but uh, 
GPR was mentioned on both those panels multiple times. Because you were on there. Yes, but I'm just saying. Okay, and that's our episode. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Peace. Wait, we're five minutes over. <laughs>